John here with John's View Photography and a lot of you out there are wondering how I'm getting these deep space photography shots. Well I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on some of the equipment I'm using and some of the techniques that I've discovered along the way on how to get those shots. <laughs> So all right, let's jump right into the equipment. I've got a DSLR, in this case a Canon 60D. I've got a Newtonian telescope. Now I went with the Newtonians because they use mirrors instead of glass. When you're using mirrors, you get a lot more light transmission because glass has a tendency to cut back on the amount of light coming through. And that's our biggest fight is the skies are dark. We're taking these pictures at night and we need to get the maximum amount of light onto the sensor of the camera. All right, one of the key things to remember besides the camera and scope is going to be the mount. I'm using a German equatorial mount in order to track the stars across the sky with a dual access motor. Now I went with the dual access motor so I can actually use the pad on the dual access motor to make minor adjustments as I need to to get right aligned with the object that I am trying to get an image of. So one of the primary things with the German equatorial mount as some of you may know and some of you may not is going to be polar alignment. What polar alignment is going to do is you're going to align the body of this mount right across this axis with the polar alignment of the earth. So as the earth spins, when you've got the motor on, it'll actually track whatever you're taking a picture of across the sky relative to the spin of the earth. This is absolutely key in deep space photography because these exposures are long, very, very long. And really, all you have is not even half a second before you start getting star trails if you were to just have a solid mount, just be looking up at the sky with a scope that really has that narrow field of view. So we can go back the rule of 275, as I call it. You can take 275 divided by whatever your focal length is, and that's the amount of time you actually have in seconds to get a still shot with the Earth rotating. All right, a couple things to point out with the German equatorial mount, other than getting it absolutely polar aligned, is balance. So you'll notice when I moved it just a little bit ago that it moved really smooth. That's because it's balanced. The weight of the camera and the scope and the weight of my counterweights is exactly the same. So it'll swivel very, very smooth. The motor doesn't have to push very hard and it won't reach a point at which it comes against the weights and slows down or just the opposite. The weight of the scope is tipping over and it speeds up, which winds up giving you star trails. So we got balance, we've got polar alignment, now the other thing is tracking. Up on the screen here you'll see a couple of motors. Now the nice thing about this mount is these motors were specifically designed for it. So they'll actually match the speed of what the earth is turning. So I didn't really have to do any kind of math, any kind of figuring, or any kind of fine tuning. Came right out of the box ready to go. That was really, really nice. I'm sure there's some math or whatnot to just take a geared down motor and figure out where it has to be set, but uh, hey, don't have to worry about it. Now the second part of this is going to be focus. Again, up on the screen I'm going to show you the focusing apparatus on this telescope. Now focusing is very key. What we're doing here is prime focus, and by prime focus that means the light is coming in the tube, it's hitting that primary mirror, it's coming up and it's hitting the secondary mirror and getting reflected directly into the camera. There's no glass, no glass whatsoever 
in between the light coming in and the camera sensor. Just mirrors reflecting the light. Don't believe me? Take a look. Get this guy off there. That's right inside the camera. That's it. Just a hole. This T-mount adapter, that's exactly what it's designed to do, is let the light pass right through. And that's the best way I have found to capture the most amount of light. Alright, another key ingredient is going to be right here. You want a remote shutter release, and in this case, it's really nice to have a programmable one. All I've got to do on this guy is set up the amount of time I want to take my exposure, throw my camera into bulb mode, and click. Go ahead and start it. I'll take a 1, 2, 3 minute, 30 minute, hour long exposure without having to touch the camera, the scope, anything. That is key. You don't even want to be near it. The scope is so long and the situation so delicate, if you walk by it, the ground will actually move just enough around the scope that it'll actually throw the image off. I didn't believe that at first, but it's absolutely true. It's good to set this for about 10 seconds away to start the image for however many minutes it's going to go, plugged into the camera, set somewhere where the cord's not going to get in the way, and go have a seat somewhere staying away from it. Anything, any little thing can set this guy off. Another thing I have also found is along with your really, really stable base is finding a really stable location. I actually have some cinder blocks that I take with me that I set underneath the feet if I'm going to be somewhere where there's soft soil. Somewhere where there's pretty hard soil or good compact gravel or rock, which is really the best, you're probably safe. But if you think you're going to be somewhere out in the middle of a grassy field, something that's going to be kind of squishy under your feet, well, it's going to be kind of squishy under the legs of the scope. So bring some support with you. So all right, we've got things set up. We know what we're up to. We've got a shutter release. Everything's set and ready to go. Now, you need to actually focus the camera in on the object you're taking a picture of. Now, that's going to be hard to do with some of these deep space images because you can't actually see the object at all. You're going to be taking a prolonged exposure because you're trying to capture it. So what I've found is find a nearby star, something really, really bright that you can hone in on. So when you crank your camera on and you can see that star, throw it into live view mode so it comes up on your screen. And even sometimes I'll actually zoom in, 10 times zoom in on that star that's nearby the object and then I actually focus it in. I'll take a test shot, usually really, really high ISO, somewhere, you know, 12,000 or even 6,400 just to see if I've got the image where I need it and make sure things are in focus as well. Once you set the focus, you've got a knob on the bottom to lock it in, and that's it. You're set. You're ready to rock and roll. Thank you for watching. Please leave your questions and comments below, suggestions for future videos, and if you want to find me on the web, go to Facebook slash John's View Photography or search John's View Photography on 500 pics. Thank you.